Good evening, Demon Nation. Demon Phil here. All right. First and foremost, let me know if you can see and hear me and we can start moving on along with this and start having some fun with this interview tonight. Uh, if you can see and hear me, I appreciate y'all being here and hope y'all had a great day and very productive. And let me take care of some business right first. That is for my baby right there. Thank you very much. And we have got Miss Shawnee is here. Welcome to the show, Miss Shawnee. Thank you for being here. All right. So we're waiting on seeing if we can get some more people in here. Y'all share this out. Let's get as many people in here as possible. And let's see. Yes, I'm aware yeah, you can see and hear me because you're in the same room with me. Yes, I know. Never look behind the curtain, people. Never look behind the curtain. And Shawnee says loud and clear. Excellent. All right, cool. Then let's get ahead, get started. Oh, there is the bionic eye himself, David Fought. All right, so first and foremost, thank you for being here tonight. We're going to go ahead and go through and thank the sponsors on here. So let's start off with Totally Rad Comics, Jimmy Noble. Right now doesn't have anything on the books as far as campaign or anything, but if you go to his web store, he's got stuff on there, and he has got stuff coming up in the very near future, so be watching out for that one. Luis Torres, Codex Entertainment, has got something going right now. And I'm going to get to that here in just a moment. Wendy Steen Shaner of Naughty Fairies has something going right now. Let's go ahead and earmark and go right back to that one as well. And then we have got CB Zane has got something going as well, a couple of things. So first off, we've got Nebula Pearl, which is the mind meld. And the reason I said that is because that is Luis Torres, that is Wendy Steen Shaner, that is CB Zane, that is Michael Shoemaker, that is, hang on a sec, that is Car Nicole and Alfred Trujillo. Make sure I get all of them in there. And then on top of that, CB has got Into the Suck Volume 6 going on right now. So don't miss out on that. Those two are live right now. So go over there for Nebula Pearl and Into the Suck Volume 6. All right. And we also have Steph Wilson is a sponsor of the show. I am so excited about that one. Actually did the artwork for the shirts and for the show and everything. If you haven't picked up one of your shirts, trust me, you're going to be wanting to get one pretty soon with stuff coming out. Not saying any more about that one. And on top of that, we have Moto's Glass. Moto's Glass does the glass etching. Uh, some of that work is on the way here as we speak and should be here probably within about a week. And then I'll be able to show you first and foremost what they can do and have all that set up. So uh, let me see. We've got some other people that are showing up in here. We have got Larry from Niobe Comics said, tell Keith hello from Niobe and that I look forward to hiring him for a cover someday soon. You know something? I'm going to say it right now. I would love to see a Niobe uh, Keith cover there. I would love to see that. So we'll be discussing that, I'm sure. And Michael James is in here. Appreciate you being here. And yes, I know. I just got the notification. Two other shows started up as well, so I know. Uh, but we're not competing. We're all working together. So go check out the other shows as well. Just earmark and make sure you come back and watch. All right. So that being said, we got some great stuff going on. Tonight, I've got a great guest on here. And as you can tell, the background is a little bit different on here. Oops, can't show that. <laughs> Facebook, <laughs> that'll be fine. So we're showing off some of the work that he does and all because not only am I interviewing this great artist tonight, I'm also a fan of his work as well. And a lot of you are as well. So we're going to go ahead and bring him out here. We're going to find out more about him, what he does, what he's worked on, and what he is going to be working on. So here he is. Keith up here. Hey. What's going on, Keith? Hey, Phil. Appreciate you being on the show. Your head is in the perfect position, by the way. I know. I know. I, I make an ass of myself all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate you being on here and taking the time to be on the show. And uh, we're just going to kind of get to know you a little bit better and what you do and all. If you'll go ahead and give them a brief rundown of who you are, what you do, and where to find you. Uh, well, I'm Keith Garvey, and I'm a... Uh freelance artist uh, mostly pinup artist but now i do a lot of comic stuff too and you can find me you just put my name keith garvey or garve or garve graphics into the into the search and you will find a whole bunch of my stuff there so easy to find excellent and just to let everyone know uh we have got uh all of these links are embedded in to the uh all of the links on there so if you want to go find out where his web pages are and everything, they are in the Facebook, the YouTube, everything. You go click on them, go directly to it. 
Um, you know, Tom, I appreciate you bringing that up. Uh, I wasn't going to go there, but I appreciate that. And I'm sure that is to me and not to Keith. <laughs> well, it's, it's appropriate. Exactly. Exactly. More ways than you know. <laughs> Well, I mean, now that we got you on here and everything, I want to go. The first thing I want to ask is, how did you get your origin into artwork? Because you've been doing this before comics as well. Right. Well, I've always drawn my whole life. Since I was a little kid, I was a, I drew. My parents were, you know, pretty supportive of it. I, I had a whole gallery in the hallway, if you know what I mean, when I was a kid. So I was always encouraged to do it, and I was good at it. So. My mother's really good artist and my aunt's a very good artist. So I kind of come by it naturally. And uh, so when I got old enough and I wanted to go to school to become an artist and I did. And from there, actually after school, it was a long time where I wasn't. I just did stuff for myself and nobody even knew that I did any art except for my family until the Internet came along. And then I started to display my art and then a lot of people noticed it and I always wanted to be a pinup artist and that's what I was doing and it sort of caught on with a whole bunch of people. So it got noticed and from there it caught on. And I noticed because I was doing research, like I said, I'm a fan as well, but just to research back and, and kind of look at how much stuff you've done, I started getting finger cramps from scrolling in, your, in yeah. just inside of your webpage there and all of the stuff that's available and the different prints that are on there. Right. You've been doing this for a while and it's not the same character, same pose, it's totally different almost every single yeah. time. Uh, yeah, it's been you know, 15 years I've been doing pinups. And I used to try to crank out a couple a month. And uh, I don't do that so much anymore because I do a lot of comic book stuff now. But I try to do at least one a month. And uh, yeah, so there's a lot of material. And, it, it, you know, in the old days, I used to just try to paint everything. And that took forever. But with the way I do them now, digitally, it's so much faster that I can get two done in a month easily. Nice. Well, I mean, they definitely look great. And we've got some to actually show on here. We'll be showing as well. Um, you can see some of his art on the main screen behind us. And then, of course, my screen behind me as well. You can see just some of the stuff that he's available on doing on here. But like I said, it's 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 so much broader than that. You have to go to the web page and take a look and see what's available on there. But there is stuff that is on right now that's available that some of his work as well, because I want to go ahead and bring up something real quick. I've actually got, I'm going to share the screen on this one. We have got a campaign from CB Zane going on right now for Into the Suck, Volume 6. And as I understand it, these things are hey. almost gone. Really? Cool. That's yes. Fun one. So this is saying that uh, there's uh, 18 of 20, I believe, of this one, 18 of 20 of the black, and there's three of 20 of the sets. So we've got, uh, there's the red, and then there's the black. And then those are 30 apiece, and then the set is right here. That one is down to three of 20. I don't know when this was actually you know, done up the last time and everything, but they're going pretty quick. So if you want some of Keith's, you know, very current work right now and help out a project in the process, CB Zane has got Into the Suck Volume 6 on there. And again, that link is embedded into the links as well on here. So you can see that. But I wanted to bring that up because that is a really cool looking piece of artwork that you got on there. Thanks. And to go from the red to the black and then change the pose like a mirror pose on there was really cool. Yeah, that was CB's idea. Uh to do the the sort of mirror images of each other he wanted one that was sort of a, a valentine and then he wanted one that was more traditional and uh so it worked out nicely and it's, it's one of them it was a fun project to work on actually exactly shawnee says variety is a spice of life and keith definitely keeps it spicy oh yeah it's jalapeno spicy above and beyond <laughs> there it's not i mean you know i try to keep it sort of r you know oh yeah no no no, no. it's not that right it's not the nudity. It's the fact that it's just, it's the very sexy poses and everything. And it looks yeah. almost like a cosplay cover most of the time. So it doesn't uh, even look like artwork some of the time. Right. Yeah. Well, that's the idea is to sexy, not dirty, right? Exactly. You got to hide something. Exactly. Wendy's these, saying these hello. Are, these, are, these are nice girls. Exactly. 
Well, they're all nice. <laughs> but I mean, you've been doing this a while. You've had some amazing stuff on there. That's just one of the things that you're working on on there. Um, I'm going to say right now, CB already knows I have my set locked in. As soon as it was released that it was on there, I was like, yeah, I've got to have it. Uh, I said I was a fan. I'm not joking because this is this is one of your older books, correct? Um, I yeah. Oh, well, they're all kind of old now, but I mean that that that, that might have been the second to the last book I put out. So that's they're, the one. Uh, book. They're out of print now, though. That's the unfortunate. Thing. Exactly. That's what I was just fixing to say. That's the one book that I have that is out of print. I don't have your other stuff, but I couldn't pass this one up because you can't find it. Right. Yeah, they're not around. You can maybe on eBay or something. Eh, I don't want to pay the eBay prices. Right. No, exactly. <laughs> I'd rather support the artist than go ahead and go straight to the place and get it through them. I like that. There's your plug right there, people. Understand, remember, and and process that. Absolutely. Support them. Uh, let's see. We've got Courtney is on here saying, I love how soft Keith's works looks. Their faces and skin are always so beautiful. Exactly. It looks realistic. It doesn't look like art. Well, thanks. Uh the whole idea of the pinup I got from like Vargas. So I, I don't know if you know who Alberto Vargas is, but he was uh, one of the old time pinup masters and all his girls were very sweet, very soft. And it was what I wanted to do since I was little. And so I've been working all my life trying to do that. And uh, turns out the, the technology makes that even, you know, easier. Exactly. And Lewis Torres is in here saying so spicy. It is amazing work. Wendy Steen Shaner. I'd love to work with him sometime. I could see you doing a Lily the Demoness uh, or an Ace and Starlet for Lewis Torres because that's what his, some of his main characters he's got on there. Yeah, I could definitely see your design on that. Um, and it's sad because I'm looking at it right now and my wallet is over here going, no, please don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's I think it's it's interesting for me to see like I when I do a piece for someone a lot of you know they're gonna show me they're gonna send me if I don't know it they're gonna send me a lot of references and what it looks like different artists that have done it before. And I'm always like uh the fun part of it is to see what how's it gonna look when I do it. You know what I mean? Like how different will it be for me and will they like what I come up with there? And uh it definitely has sort of a different feel. And that being said, goes straight into this question right here is how is it that every one of Keith's images continues to get better than the last? I absolutely agree. Well, thanks. Uh, I hope they do. That's great. Well, I mean, that being said, even with the CB Zane stuff we showed up on there and everything, that's some of your more recent work. Yeah. And everything that yeah. you've got is great and everything, but oh, you can definitely that. see it. So that's what Rob's bringing up on there. And it's true. Uh, well, thanks. I mean, I, I'm hoping to get better all the time. I hope people think that, you know, you're only as good as your last one, right? Isn't that what they say? So exactly. You know, I'm hoping to stay, you know, I don't want to get bored and then get stale and get dull. So I'm always trying not to. So maybe that that's why. But, uh, you know, thanks. And of course, Wendy's saying whenever you do it, it's magic. She would bring that up because Naughty Fairy Stripper Assassins. I mean, that's. That's a place where the, the pinups that you do on there, they have a home right there. That sounds good, right? Just the title. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And Rob's bringing up, because I was going to ask about your commissions, you know, what you do with your commissions. And he said, I'd imagine for a commission, you need to let Keith do Keith, uh, which means basically just let you have the reins on that and figure out how you want to do that. Well, some, some, uh, some people do and some don't. I mean, some people are very specific in what they want. And if they are that way, then I want to hear exactly what they want because I don't want to do what they don't want. But, you know, if you give me freedom, that's fun, too. I mean, you don't get a lot of freedom when you do these things. But, uh, you know, give me a box. I'll stay in it. And then give me some freedom in that box, and I'm good. Exactly. And are you doing commissions as well? Yes, I am. I'm booked for a while now. So, okay, you know, like you could write to me, but and I could tell you maybe give you a time frame from when I might be open. Okay. It's at least I'm at least a month or so out. Because you've been doing a lot of uh, cover work as well. I mean, you're, right. you're popping out covers left and right. Yeah, mostly that's what I'm doing now. I'm getting a lot of requests for covers. You know, since guys like CB and uh, Zenoscope have been using me, I'm getting exposure, and more people are saying, "Oh, he does that kind of thing too," and they're kind of interested. They want to see what I'm going to come up with. So, 
lately I've been getting a lot of requests for that kind of thing. I still get some other kinds of requests also, but I've sort of put those on the back burner because this is this is kind of new and fresh for me, so it's fun. Exactly. Now, Rob's saying, I may need to find a way to sneak onto that list. There you go, Rob. Well, you definitely need to get on that it's list. It's not that far off, but yeah, it's going to be a little while. <laughs> well, he'll be looking into you. Trust me. If he's okay. got interest on there, he'll, he'll be looking into it. Right. But um, I know one one set that got my attention was uh, with Totally Rad Comics whenever they did the Halloween covers that you were doing. Okay. Uh, those came out amazing with those. The uh, the different, I think there was three different covers. The trilogy cover. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah, they they uh they had a specific ideas of what they wanted, but they also gave me some freedom there, and uh, you know uh, the way they work together. That's the first time I ever did something like that, where each one kind of flows into the other. It was a lot of it was it was a, a fun project to work on. Excellent. And my girlfriend is in here. She's saying your art is amazing. So you've got a seal of approval from the demon seal of approval well, and from the demon's girlfriend. So thank you. Thank you. I, I take pride in the fact that women like it too. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And Rob's saying he doesn't mind waiting whenever it comes to amazing art. That is very true. Cool. So, I mean, you've got some, uh, some great projects that you've been working on and you said basically one ish a month is what you're looking at, you know, doing on your covers and all besides CB Zane's thing. What are you doing that's more recent that you've been working on? Um, boy, I wish I knew things i wish i knew names better uh i'm new to this so it's like so these people are, are sort of fresh to me and i get a lot of stuff but i am working on i'm working on two zenoscope pieces right now i just actually i just pretty much finished one and then i have another one in the works and then i have uh your friend jim noble coming up mm -hmm. next week i'm working on a piece for him okay right after that uh, Hutchinson, Hutchins, I yes, Tom Hutchinson, him. yes, coming up right after that, I think. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure what they all entail yet, but those are the who I'll be working on shortly. And I'll go ahead and say it right now so that everybody that's out there that can hear it, Tom, <clears throat> I'm not going to ask him any further on what's going to be on there, so don't worry about it. We're not going to get details on this. <laughs> I mean, I've seen the character. I just don't know exactly what he wants yet because I haven't fleshed it out yet. Right. And David says, been a huge fan forever. You're an inspiration because David does some amazing work himself as well. I would love to see a mashup between you and him. I think your pinup between the two of you would be amazing on a cover. Yeah. Pinup artist or comic artist? Yes. Uh, pinup artist, yes. He, he's, he does the uh, the comic pinup. Uh, he does interiors every once in a while, but it's more of the comic, uh, the, the cover art stuff. Yeah. We're the actually working. Are, I find the interior artists amazing. I can't do that. Oh, yeah. The the level of, of patience that you have to have to do that, I just I can't get over that. It's, a, it's such a different skill. And Mike DeBalfo is in here. Mike, appreciate you being here. Keith is the man. Hey, Mike, I love his stuff. Man. I've always knocked out by his work. Exactly. And Wendy said he did the bull ring set for the Naughty Fairies, uh, and he has a cover set for Naughty Fairies 5. Oh, right. nice. The bull rider. Nice. Yeah, I remember that one. Definitely looking forward to that. I mean, the the not like I said, the Naughty Fairies stuff, it just kind of screams the pinup. Yeah. And your stuff just has to have a home there, which I know Wendy's already making sure you have a home there with that. Well, yeah. I mean, I did some stuff already. And uh, it was that, you know, like, I think that's one of the reasons why some of these people choose me. I, and I think they think this is going to suit this character or this line. Exactly. Um, Shawnee. Happy. Shawnee agrees. A collab between Keith and David would be amazing. Uh, we need to make that happen. We need to make that happen. We're, yeah. we're going to work on something that way. Definitely. And uh, my gal says same thing. Agreed. That would be awesome. So it looks like we need to definitely make that collab happen. Uh, we'll have to figure out who's going to fight over the, uh, the the cover on that one. If it's going to be Jim or Tom or Wendy or somebody on that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we can we can always just throw it out there and just, you know, have them, you know, two may enter, one may leave scenario. Just Thunderdome it. <laughs> Thunderdome it. <laughs> And David said, oh, guys, you're killing me. 
he is worth it. He's got some amazing art on there. He's actually been nominated or won the, the uh, thing for uh, best breakout artist for 2020, I believe. Wow. So that was a big deal. Yeah. Awesome. So I want to, I want to put some props out there to Dave on that one, but uh, you know, with your stuff, you've been working on it for how long have you been doing this exactly for how many years? Well, I've been doing the, the digital pinup kind of thing for 15 mm -hmm. years. Uh, before that, I used to just do do it on paper, you know, traditional. Uh, but I've been doing it for forever. My whole life, basically, been drawing women and comic books. I used to collect comic books when I was a kid. Till I was, I know, I stopped when I was about seventeen years old. But that whole time, I wrote. Me and my brother, we wrote our own comic book at one point. He was the writer, I was the artist, and so I've always been doing. It. I mean, it seems like forever. Just no one cared before, and now now people care. <laughs> Well, they should care. I mean, it's great stuff. Even whenever you go to the older stuff and you see where the origins came from on it, you can, like I said, you can see the evolution on there, but you've always had that passion in your work for what you're doing. And you've stayed within that. I'll keep it sexy, but it's not going to be X rated scenario. Right. Right. I've done very few sort of, I've get some requests for X rated stuff, but I have done a few kind of erotic things, but for the most part, I don't, it's uh, you know, I don't find, I don't find it as interesting to be honest with you. Right. Well, it's nice to have a little bit to the imagination. You never know, you know. Yeah. I, I mean, the old traditional pinups are always been my thing. And I always just wanted to modernize it. You know, that was my idea. It's like, I'm going to be the, the modern Vargas. And so that was what I was going for. Exactly. Like Soriyama, you know who Hajime Soriyama? Yes. He's a Japanese pinup artist. He does a lot of other things too, but he was very famous for a lot of pinups he did. And they were sort of, they were gorgeous. They were beautiful art, but they were sort of hard. You know what I mean? They sort of had a harder edge to it. I just wanted to be the opposite of that. Or like a, um, a Huerta, Amanda Huerta, Armando Huerta. Mm -hmm. His girls were always sort of like, they might beat you up. You know what I mean? <laughs> like they were beautiful and the artwork was amazing, but his girls might beat you up. I didn't want my girls to be that. I want my girls to be the girl next door, but she's amazing. Exactly. And that's the, yes, that's the word I was looking for. Thank you. Uh, it's sultry. Yes, exactly. Awesome. That's what I'm going for. And let's see, we've got, let me, let me go ahead and share the screen while we're talking because we're going to show some of the art as we go along. So y'all can get the drool going. Uh, let me go ahead and bring it up on here. Just a few pieces that we've got that we're going to kind of show off as we go along. Yeah, that was a Xenoscope piece I just did. Well, not just did it, but a few months ago. That came out. I love the way that it's the darkened silhouette on there. Like you said, it's the sultry because it's not straight out in your face. You don't know what's going on with it. Right. You don't know that was one of I'm not sure what the scenario was, but that was one of their covers. As a you know variant. That came out really well, and and I love the shading on there. It came out perfectly. Thanks. I mean, it does. It looks. It does take a whole new. It takes a pin up to a whole new level. It's almost the cosplay style is what I'm saying. It, it, you could take a glance at that and go, wait a minute, who is that cosplay in there? And then you have to look at it going, wait a minute, that's actually drawn out. That's pretty good. Oh, cool. Thank you. Yeah, that yeah. was a fun one. Yeah. That's <laughs> a, another Xenoscope cover I did. That's their, uh, that's um, uh, Robin Hood. And uh, it's a coast. She's co doing cosplay there. Their character right. doing cosplay as a Pennsylvania state trooper. I haven't run into many state troopers that look like that. I'm no, just going to say it out no, loud. That that more if I did. No, I mean, I might speed a little more, but no, no. Right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I, you know, I might want to also Robin Hood, New York city. Yes. And fun. I love the way that it's not just the, the pinup on there and everything. It's all the background that goes into there and then how it goes out of focus. The further you look back, so well, it doesn't yeah, stay I mean, very crisp. Yeah, the idea here is sort of fisheye. And I mean, I kind of wanted it. Uh, backgrounds, you know who's a big motivator for me for doing backgrounds? No, backgrounds are something I didn't do a lot of. A lot of my girls are just completely in a white background. When I started doing comic books, I looked at Mike DeBelfo's stuff. He does the best backgrounds I've ever seen. And I thought, very if true. I got to with that, then I got to get better. So that's what I did. So that's what I'm trying to do anyway. Very true. That that, uh, yeah, I can see where Mike does have the. He does it's, love his backgrounds on that. That's amazing. amazing on some of the stuff he does with that. 
again, another Xenoscope uh, comic. That was for when they were going to Comic Con in Philadelphia, I think. And okay. Rob says Keith posts regularly on Facebook, and I swear I want to own every piece he posts. Absolutely. I post a piece every day. Every day I post one piece. Most of it's old, you know, it's old pieces because I only do like one new piece a month. So, uh, so most of it's old, but a lot of people haven't seen a lot of the older pieces. So I try to just, you know, even if you've seen it before, you know, maybe you, you haven't seen it in a while. So you want to see it again. Exactly. Mike says, Oh dude, I'm really flattered, man. So yeah, he, he's, he deserves, you know, getting some respect on that too and everything with the backgrounds and all, because he's, he's come, he's, he's come a ways with his stuff as well. Yeah, he's, he's amazing. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, it's some amazing stuff that's on here. Yeah. And Christy fought is on here saying absolutely beautiful. There is some amazing stuff. This is just Thanks. a handful of stuff we've got on here. That was a new character the Xenoscope was doing. I'm not sure. I know they came out with this. I'm not sure if it carried on with it, but this was the first issue they were doing of it. And they just gave me an idea, a breakdown of what they wanted the costume to be like. And, uh, she was like a gypsy. She was magical. I forget her name right now. But um, so that was the first one. And I just sort of, they wanted it a full body look of their new character. Very cool. And we have got Ryan Kincaid's in here. Ryan, I appreciate you being here. Don't flatter Mike. It will be trouble. <laughs> uh, we've got a bunch of people in here. This is great. Uh, if you have not shared it out yet, please share it out. And uh, let's get some more people in here. Uh, Mike is asking, who let Ryan out of his cage? Uh, yeah, well, here we go. They're going to have fun in the comments now. That right? But that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't have fun, what's the point? This uh, this is a Zetoscope that I, it won, and I'm not sure exactly what it won, but it won something. <laughs> yeah. It won like a comic book cover of the month on one of these, on a website that does that kind of thing. And... Uh, I was really proud of it when I did it and they really loved it. So Xenoscope let me know that it won and I was, uh, you know, excited to see that, but it's one of my favorite ones. It's one of the Xenoscope characters. Van Helsing. Yes. I love that cover. That, that is amazing with that. And Ryan is saying, let me see. Ryan is saying, but Keith, you rock man. Thanks Ryan. And it's always entertaining when Ryan and Mike are in the same chat. Um, I, I am definitely seeing that. Yes. Need them, need them in the chat more often and see some stuff. I might need to get all of them up on screen all at the same time and see what happens. <laughs> There's a fight. It'd be like, you know, the news are fighting with each other. Well, it's just like fight club. We would never talk about it. Exactly. <laughs> this was a personal piece I did for uh, a guy who plays trombone. And he has a special music room and he wanted a piece of mine. And uh, so he let me just go and do whatever I felt like, as long as it was a girl and she had a trom trombone. And that's what I came up with. It's New Orleans. You can't really tell, but it's supposed to be New Orleans. It, I was going to ask if it was, because it's got the feel of New Orleans all the way right. across. It's probably not accurately New, York, New Orleans, but I wanted it to, you know, you'd think it was New Orleans if you looked at oh, it. Oh, yeah. I mean, if I had to guess at it, I would definitely say it was. And it's pretty close to it, yes. I mean, I looked at reference. I wasn't, you know, but it's still, I had a, you know. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a, an older piece. I actually painted, I did both versions of this. I did a digital, digital version. And I painted with oils, a big one. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I thought, what would a pinup look painted like with oil paint? instead of like uh, the spray paint that you usually see it, because airbrush. And uh, it was really, really nice. Actually, I show some pictures of that uh, in, on the, uh, it's in one of my websites. I have pictures of, of doing that. But anyway, and somebody wanted it right away, and I sold it. Nice. And let me see. Ryan is saying, Keith, I'm in need of a persuasion cover this summer. Oh. Okay. This summer. Persuasion three. There we go. Okay. Uh, Christy is waiting for lightning bolt so she can dodge it. Uh, I haven't said anything. I, I'm innocent. In, 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 innocent. Yeah, that's me. 
<laughs> and this turned out to be a great night. Uh, hey, we're just getting started. I mean, it's, it's always a great time. We always have fun. And David is saying, wow, because, yeah, I'm telling you, you, you see it, David. You got the bionic eye now. You can really see the detail in this stuff. I mean, it's, it's coming out great. I love the way, like I said, it's totally different. It's different styles between the different ones that are on there. It's different poses, different lighting. You know, that's the thing is I, I can get kind of burned out if I'm doing a lot of pinups sometimes because it's like I feel like sometimes I'm doing the same picture over again just with, a, you know, maybe slightly different look. And that's what I don't want to do. So it's hard to stay really fresh, but, you know, that's what I'm going for. Exactly. Okay, Mike's got a request in. Ryan, we should commission Keith to paint a portrait of us. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's going to cost a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> we would love to see the finished work. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> this is a, a favorite of mine. Like uh, A lot of my fans really like this one. I like it too. It's really yes. old. It's one of the first couple of years when I was first starting to learn how to do digital artwork. And uh, it got a really big reaction when I when I made it. So it's always been sort of a classic of mine. And I, I love that one. And you can definitely tell it's an older piece on there or anything, but it definitely has that that attitude. Uh, that's I mean, it's got that that sultry yes, but it's still got that attitude with it as well. And right. if you can actually present that without having too much of you know like a word bubble above them or anything like that, it comes out amazing. Thanks. And Rob says, I saw this piece the other day and almost fell over. You're not the only one, Rob. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a lot of people like that one. It's pretty old. It's got to be 12, 13 years ago. Shawnee says she loves this one. Christy says, I love all the work. Can't pick a favorite. Exactly. Uh, it, it's And this is only, I mean, a little bit. You've got to go to the website, but... Uh, Bring a bottle of water, maybe a snack. Uh, stay hydrated while you're going through there. There's a lot to go through. And yeah, you if, you go to Gar rolling. if you go to GarthGraphics.com, there's a whole bunch on there. The thing about the, my website is it's it's pretty much locked up right now the way it is. It's not going to change. And this is because, and this is a really unusual story, but I got free web space from a strip club. They wanted to give me free. If I did work for them for promotion, they'd give me free access. So... I put my website on there. It was great. I had it free every month. I do some work for them to give me free access. Mm -hmm. uh, 10 years, 15, 12 years on there. The guy who did their IT made the deal with me without telling anybody else that he made this deal with me. <laughs> and they uh, changed the password. I can't get in anymore. I can't change it anymore. It is what it is. <laughs> and okay. I can't change the links. I can't do anything to it. And, uh, I can't contact anyone because I don't know who to contact. And if wow. I did, they'd probably take it off. So, Right. Huh. But it, as long as it's there, you know, the way I feel about it is you can see all my new stuff. If you go to my, um, if you go to Twitter, my, my Twitter page, or if you go to Instagram or DeviantArt, all my new stuff is going to be on there and you'll be able to see it. You almost don't need a website with all the social media now. You can just, you know, right. like, you can add alone. You can pretty much do whatever you like. And you also had one because the link is in all of these as well for the escape collectibles. Yeah, that's for my prints. If you want a print of mine, they both have signed prints and unsigned prints. They're really, really cool dude runs in place. And he makes beautiful prints. And uh, so if you want any of my prints, you go there, escapecollectibles.com. Look under the head, head, heading modern artists, Keith Garvey. And... Uh, He's got just about everything I have there. And, if, and I, again, if he doesn't have it and you want it and you tell him you want it, he'll probably get it for you. Okay. And again, all of these links are embedded in. So if you go to, if you're on the Facebook, if you're on the YouTube, all you do is look in there at the post on the description and all of the links are in there. I made it very easy for y'all. Uh, Ryan is offering up his services. My brother-in-law is a hacker. We can make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> I might need him. <laughs> yeah, serious, I don't know what to do about it, but I might need them. Well, uh, we're officially going to go ahead and cover our ears on the online front of this to make sure we're not accessories to that one. <laughs> <laughs> Just a joke. Allegedly. Yeah, of course. 
it's it's reference material for another print you're working on, right? right. A hacker. We're talking. Print. We're talking comics. <laughs> the hacker. It's a new. Comic. Shawnee, exactly. We need to start a free Keith campaign. <laughs> it's, it's not that bad. I mean, it's okay. I'm happy to have what I have on there and don't have to pay for it. So they don't seem to knock, they don't uh, ever kick me off the server. So I guess they don't mind either. Exactly. Ryan says, don't ask, don't tell. Don't ask, don't tell what? I don't know what you're talking about. Exactly. <laughs> don't, don't talk about Fight Club. Exactly. We, we don't we don't discuss about that right. now what I would like to discuss about though is you've got all of this work that you're working on you've got covers you're working on and all what inspires you like what do you sit down with do you have a certain music do you have a certain you know uh, fragrance you know, I, you put on or I, something anything you know I don't I do listen to music I listen to you know I, I have the st uh, satellite radio and I just I change it all the time it could be whatever but um, no I don't really need to be inspired it's weird I don't necessarily see something and go, now I'm going to get to work. I'm, I wake up inspired to do this. I can't believe this is what I do. I'm so excited to be who I, you know, to be able to do what I do that I'm, you know, I can't wait. Somebody gives me a new project. I can't wait to design, you know, come up with a, you know, a, a, something for them to look at. So I can go, you know, break down their character for them. And, you know, I just get excited about the whole thing and it's really don't need much inspiration. I know that's a, that's a terrible answer, but, it's true. I no. don't need to be inspired. I mean, it's it's a it's a realistic answer, but it's one of those that I didn't expect, to be honest, because you know, I would think you would have to have like something in particular that would actually get you in the mood to go ahead and draw no. this much this coffee. way. <laughs> coffee helps. <laughs> well, now, coffee you know, helps. Sometimes I will see sometimes I will see an actress or an actor or a model or something. I'll see a picture and that will sometimes I'll get an idea. I'll think, oh, I like whatever something they did with that picture that I liked. I'll go. Oh, I do like that. And then I'll, that might inspire me to do a, a particular uh, pinup. But just the fact that, you know, that I get to do this is enough for me. I'm, I'm happy to do anything. I mean, so, within the genre. Right, exactly. So what has been your most challenging piece? What's the one piece that you've had to work on that you're like, you started out on and then by the time you finished it, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that's done. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Well, I don't know if there's one specific piece that I can say that that happened to. There's a lot of pieces that I have worked on and I thought I didn't like it, you know, like, especially if I'm working with somebody else and I go, you know, I'm not crazy about the way the face turned out or the pose I had them in or, you know, something. And I try before I let them see it to sort of come up with a couple other ideas until I feel like I like it. But I've had a few where I, I got through it and went, I don't know. I'm not that crazy about it. They seem to like it, but I was not that crazy. Those are the ones I don't like because then I feel like I didn't do my job. So you're overcritical about what you do. You don't just throw it out there. You actually look at it 15 times over going, ah, I could do or I could change or I could well, do this. Um, if, if, I, if, I don't like, if I don't like it, if I don't like something about it, definitely. If I there's something about it that I'm going, I don't like the way I did this, then yeah, I don't. I don't feel comfortable letting it go. I have let some of that stuff go because the person seemed to really like it. But, you know, yeah, it bothers me if I do that. I feel like I haven't, I haven't, you know, I haven't done my job well. And, and I'm not happy. It makes me very unhappy. <laughs> so on the flip side of that coin, what's something that you've worked on that's been the most fun to work on? Something that you sat back going, that's my grail. That's, that's what I love to add so much fun doing. Well, any of the, any of, see, cause I'm sort of new to comics. And I used to love comics and uh, I love this new kind of way my career's going. So it's not just another pinup today that I'm doing, which I love. Don't get me wrong. But uh, that I have to take what somebody else wants and then make it into a Garb girl sort of, you know, it's their character. But I have to bring my my style to it and everything. That's been that's inspirational to me right there. That's been fun. A challenge that's gives me, they give me the structure and I got to come up with it. That's been the most fun thing I've been doing lately. And the fact that they're printing my stuff on comic books. You know, if you told oh, yeah. me when I was a kid that they're, you're going to do covers of comic books, I wouldn't have believed you. And it seems like they're, I mean, you're not only getting printed, you're getting accepted and printed a lot of because people are buying your stuff left and right. You know, that's weird. Uh, I always thought that maybe I wouldn't be. 
I thought maybe some of the other, other artists wouldn't, I don't know if they wouldn't like me, but they wouldn't appreciate me going over to do comic covers or something like that, or they didn't think it was appropriate, my kind of art or something. I was, I just worried about it. I not, just wasn't sure about how the other artists would feel about it. More than I thought people wouldn't like it, fans wouldn't like it. I worried about how other artists would feel about it. And it seems like they've all accepted you and everything's great because, you <laughs> yeah, know, no death threats or anything that we know about. <laughs> yeah, I was worried about it. They've been terrific. Just nobody's said anything or done anything. If they feel that way, they haven't said it to me. <laughs> Just word of advice, keep your eye on that David Falk guy. Trust me. All right. <laughs> Get that down. Okay. <laughs> and Mike says, man, screw those guys. <laughs> you know, if they don't accept you and everything, that you know, there's, you know. It hasn't happened. So I've been lucky, but I was worried about it. Maybe I shouldn't have been, but I was. Rob says you are beyond appreciated. That is absolutely true. Thanks, Rob. And it's cool because, I mean, you're not putting on a workload that just weighs you down completely where you can't keep up with it and we can't keep up with what you're doing. You're doing just enough where you can keep your name out there, but you keep the things going as well. You know, I have enough uh, work backed up, you know, done, completed, that on a, on a daily basis I can put out something people haven't seen in years on, on uh, social media, on the Internet. Well, I'm working on uh, maybe comic book stuff. And then... In between working on comic book stuff, I can create slowly. You know, I don't have to crank it out. I can put it out whenever I want. I can create another pinup, put that out whenever it's ready. You know, I don't have to rush on that. There's no there's no deadline for that one. So in between each one, I can do that and come up with, I'm trying to get one a month. I haven't, I didn't get one last month, but I have like three started that haven't been finished. <laughs> that I do a lot. I start a piece. I don't like it. I put it on the back burner and then I never get back to it. <laughs> There's a lot of those half done. Ryan says you're good in my book. Uh, <clears throat> holds knife tightly behind back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, Ryan, Mike, I'm, I'm going to have to get y'all on unscripted. We're, we're going to have to have a talk about this one. Uh, we're having too much fun with this one, but, uh, so you've been working on some stuff. You've got a lot of stuff going. You, you've got enough to keep you busy yeah. and you're doing the commissions and all too. Right. What is something that you haven't worked on that you aspire to work on? Like what's in your bucket list to go ahead and work on? Okay. So this is the thing. I want to do a sculpture. Uh, my wife bought me the, the clay and all the, cause I, I haven't done it. I'll tell you what I did a sculpture when I was in art school. It was a bust of Jimi Hendrix. That's the last time I did one. So I was like, I really want to do a pinup. I don't know if I would just do a, a half a pin, like a bust or the whole thing. I haven't even worked it out yet, but that's what I really want to do. So she bought me the clays. She bought me all the tools for like my birthday. And it is set <laughs> in a drawer and I haven't touched it yet because I got to make money. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I really, that's what I really want to do though. I think I would be good at it. I don't know why I think I would be good at it. But I think I'd be good at it. Well, you don't see that many of the pinup sculptures that are out there. You see some like the uh, the fantasy stuff and things like that. You see some of that out there, yes. Sure. Yeah. But the like style that you have, have, like, yeah, exactly. The style that you have like this, I if you were to do. That I already created, like one of the girls, like the one behind you there. Yes. And try to, like, um, recreate it. I, I don't know, you know, exactly how that's going to work out because I haven't done it. But I think, I don't know. I want to try it anyway. I agree. I mean, I, I think that would be very cool to see that and to have that set up on there and maybe do once or twice a year, you know, a new sculpture on there and you would have people bouncing all over the place getting those things. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. But I would just like to see if I could do it. I mean, I think I can. I, I think it would come out okay. Whether or not I would really like, you know, oh, this is great or it's just, oh, it's okay. <laughs> I'm still going to do it though at some point. And let's see, there's a lot of comments over here, but it's a lot of, uh, <laughs> it's a lot of Mike, David, Rob, and uh, Ryan having fun over there. That's so right. I'm going to have some fun. Oh yeah, I am. That's absolutely. I'm just making sure I don't miss any questions or anything going through there. So, you know, you want to do the sculpture thing on there. That's something right. that you want to do on that. Uh, I like to do more painting too. Uh, I, I have done painting in the past though. I mean, I know I can do that, but um, it takes a lot longer. And, right. Um, I'm not really, if I had an apprentice, that would be awesome. Someone to clean up for me, 
You know what I mean? Like somebody who's going to clean all the brushes, who's going to take care. I'd like to just walk in, start to work, everything set up, and then walk out and have someone else clean it all up. That's I, I'm not a, I'm not real patient with. I destroy brushes. I don't clean them. Uh, it, I'm just not very good at that aspect of it. I have to be better, really. It's actually hurting the work because I'm running out of good brushes and I, I didn't clean it well enough, these kind of things. And I hate doing it. <laughs> Ryan says I want to sculpt, but Play-Doh doesn't last long in my house. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my granddaughter right. has Play-Doh. I'm always making little things. Not little pinups, though. And David says, I'd love to see some sculptures. David, you need to make some as well. That that's it needs to happen. And uh <laughs> you have to remember to put the kids back in, but uh yeah, they're they're having some fun over here. Uh I cannot keep up with their conversation as much and still keep up with this one. This one I'm just trying to make sure no uh, no questions are missed. It's all right. <laughs> No, but you've got some amazing work. You've got you've gotten a lot done. Are there any um, any companies that you haven't worked for that you're actually you know you're like, hey, I would really like to go ahead and do some work for one of these publishers. Is there well, anyone in particular? You know, I don't have one in particular. I mean, it'd be awesome to work for one of the big you know the big two, <laughs> right? Marvel, DC. How about that? But they don't really. My work doesn't really uh, lend itself to that kind of stuff. But yeah, any of the big ones that'd be awesome. Who doesn't want to do that? And Ryan is saying, I've had multiple retailers ask to use Keith on covers. None have made it happen, so I will. There you go. Awesome. That that needs to happen. It needs to be out there more where people can get a hold of it. See, that's the whole point with the indies is it's been, it's been put in the back burners for so long. And it had the one chance uh, during last year to go ahead and be put on the front burner because the other two shut down for a while. Yeah. And people are starting to look going, wait a minute there's something else that I can look into besides just the big two. I mean, I'm not saying yeah. them completely out, but and give them give it sort of a whole different feel in the, in the indie comics. They're, they're, they're a little freer, you know, exactly. So you get a, you get a lot of varied kind of stories and characters. Exactly. I, I would not uh, disagree with you on that by any means whatsoever. And, uh, Oh, there we go. A Wanda Keith version. I hadn't even thought about that one, but that would be right down your alley. Okay. Scarlet Witch Keith version. Oh yeah. Yeah, I would do Scarlet Witch. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that would that would suit me. <laughs> that would definitely that would be yeah. interesting. I'd like to see that. She, she fits. Exactly. I mean, some of them you can't just take and change up without changing their entire look, but that's one that you can actually take and just go, I just need a few tweaks on this and I'm good. Yeah. 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 She's already got the, the, the look, you know, some of the, some of the uh, variant covers that I've done, it's not the character in their costume. It's their character doing cosplay because their costume maybe isn't as sexy as they want it to be. So they have me do a variant of them in, you know, jean shorts, you know what I mean? Like, so that I they right. can see their character in that situation. It's usually not the cover, but it's a, you know, a version of it. Exactly. And Jim's going ahead and offering stories about killer toasters, even that you could get involved in killer toasters. Okay. I'm not sure how you can make a toaster. Sexy. Well, we will find out on Thursday because he's releasing some stuff then through Totally Rad Comics, and then he'll do it again next year. So you may be on next year's. Maybe uh, I'm misunderstanding what toasters there. are. Exactly. So uh, you may want to keep your eyes open for that one. Pay attention on there. And George Schwartz says, "Hot ladies, I hope you're talking about the girls behind us and the artwork and everything, because it's not us. I mean, <laughs> don't let the long hair fool you." <laughs> I mean, we're good looking. <laughs> No, I appreciate you being here, George. No, it's, uh, I mean, there's, there's a lot of stuff that you're working on that you've got going, a lot of things that you can get involved in very quickly. And you don't want to get to the point where you're so overwhelmed, you know, that you can't get out of quicksand, basically. Yeah, there's so, a, I'm trying to balance now. I get a lot of requests, and I, um, I tend to not want to turn away work. But um, so I've been telling people how it is, you know, I'm sort of building a list. Because I tend to overbook, and then I'm trying to jam stuff in, and I'm not meeting someone's deadline or something like that. So yeah, I've been actually gotten better at it, and I'm pretty good now. I can 
pretty much got a nice, I know what my, my pace is though. Very cool. And again, the links are in here so everybody can go take a look and see what's available on there. Support your indie artists. I mean, help them out, you know, do whatever. And it doesn't always mean financial if you don't have it. Don't mean to go, you know, break the bank or anything. Use the power of that finger, hit share, and let other people know what this man has and get some other people involved. That's the big thing is you, you want to make sure and spread it out, you know, as much you, as you can and get as many people involved so they can see and get the exposure level out there. Yeah, you can't get overexposed. No such well, thing. actually, that's Jimmy Noble's uh, slogan, but we're not going to go there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I'm, I'm not even going to step into that landmine. That's already <laughs> sitting in there. I'm not going into that one. But yeah, I mean, you've got you've got amazing stuff. We, we're enjoying what we're seeing so far. You've got a lot planned up for the future, which we're definitely looking forward to. Uh, we are definitely looking forward to a collab between you and Dave, because there have been several people that are involved in that. So I think I'm going to have to talk to some publishers and see who's going to jump ball on this one and get both of you involved in that. So, uh, David, if you're still here watching, get ready, buddy. You got, you're about to go back to work. I'm putting you to work. And, you're like uh, an agent. Well, I'm, I'm working toward it. So we'll put it that <laughs> way. Changes are happening within my business online, so uh, we're working towards some things. You're a broker now. <laughs> but, I mean, well, we – as a, you look at it as, you know, from a business standpoint, but you also have to look at it from a fan standpoint because you have to be able to see what people want, what that's out there. So if I put out there that I would like to see it, and then I've got four or five other people just tonight, just automatically saying, yes, do it, do it, do yeah. it. That means something that means yeah. it's no longer just a, yeah, it would be okay. It's more of a, yeah, we need to do this. Sure. Yeah. And feedback is probably great. And I knew that was going to happen. There's your first publisher right there that's saying, I'll jump on it. So, all right, we're uh, moving. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and David's saying, Oh man, be honored, speechless. Uh, you know, I, the best thing I can do for everybody in the indie industry is get more exposure out there for you and let people know what you can do and see the best you can. Because the whole thing about indies is exactly what you do in yours, Keith, is you put the passion into your work. If, as long as you're putting the passion into your work and expressing it that way, that means more to me and to most every fan out there than it does just having a collection of something that means nothing. Yeah, I think it's a good point. I think that the indies, when I was, we were talking earlier about what I thought, uh, yeah, the passion behind the indie comics is amazing. But you don't get that in the, in the big time. At least it doesn't feel that way. Exactly. Uh, yeah, you can feel it in the indie comics. These people love what they're doing. Exactly. Exactly. And you have definitely got plenty of passion involved in all of your work that you've got. And I'm telling you, everybody needs to go over there, take a look and see what he's got. I want to see some posts, actually. I want to put a demonation challenge out there. Y'all love it whenever I do this. I want to put this out there. He doesn't have an actual campaign or anything going, but I want to see some more stuff that's not him posting. So I want each of you to go over. Find some stuff of his because it's already got his watermark on there, so you can't steal yeah, it. Don't worry about it. And just go ahead and do a post on Facebook. Tag Keith. Tag myself. And just go ahead and do a post up there and let people know they need to get on his artwork and see what's going on. And just let's see how many we can get out there. I just want to throw pebbles out in the pond and see what we get out of the, out of the ripples there. <laughs> okay. I'll take it. And let's see. Hope they make new covers. There's going to be all kinds of new covers coming up. I mean, all kinds. And let me see. Oh, that's because George uh, Schwartz Xenoscope published a whole series of football covers by me years ago that the Redskins uh, among one of the last. So there's covers with the football stuff and everything. I'm sure yeah. you could have some fun with that one, too, because yeah. you can always do the, the pinup style on that. Yeah, absolutely. I would I've say something. Some football, girls. I know I, I would say something to go along with that, but that's also the whole no negativity in my, uh, <laughs> in my show. Yeah, so I'm not going to get into the whole football and, and naming off teams and everything. <laughs> we don't want to start a war in here. No. <laughs> the football team was pretty good. Last year. <laughs> they could have thought a different name though. The football team. That was terrible. All right. I'm True. Sorry. No, 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 this, that, absolutely. The football team was awful, though. They could have thought of the name. 
<laughs> well, it was the quickest thing they could put down. I, I, don't know. Know. I know it's not going to stay that way, but it was. <laughs> I mean, you never know. It may be Keith Garvey that's going on those helmets next year. That's going to have their new Garv, logo on the here. Garv girls or Garv <laughs> guys. <laughs> Hey, stranger things have happened. You never know nowadays. It's just a matter of if you want it bad yeah. enough, reach out there. You, you need to pay them a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, the royalties alone, every time you see those helmets and that material and everything come up on there, you just be banking in it. Yeah. And NFL is very strict. They're very strict with their, you don't put anything of theirs on your pinup. They're very strict. Yep. Exactly. Well, Keith, I could keep you on here much longer tonight and everything, but we're going to go ahead and ask you, if you will, go ahead and give us one last audible shout out on where we can find you. Okay. Well, if you just, here's the thing. I, I'm, I'm terrible at this. If you go online and you look up Garv Graphics, Keith Garvey, Garv, Garv Girls, you'll find my, uh, you'll find my Twitter, my Instagram, and my uh, DeviantArt, Garv23, DeviantArt. And uh, my website is garbgraphics.com. Very you can nice. Find my stuff. If you want to buy a, a, a signed print, or if you just want to print, it doesn't have to be signed, uh, escapecollectibles.com. Just look under modern artists, and I'm right at the top. And you can buy just about any print I have. Excellent. Uh, definitely looking forward to going and looking more over there myself, and everyone else needs to do the same thing. Keith, thank you very much for being here. Thanks I'm for having me. You, uh, I'm going to drop you backstage. I'm going to do my okay. closing statements. If you want to hang out back there and I'll be back there shortly. Okay, great. Thanks. All right. Bye, thank you. All right. So we had Keith Garvey on here tonight. We had a great time getting to know him, getting to know his artwork and some of his goals and aspirations and whatnot's going on. So I always have a closing statement. Tonight's not going to be any different. I usually try to base it on my guest at the time, which I'm going to do tonight as well. And it's kind of going along with my last statement that I made tonight, which is if you want it bad enough, all you do is reach out there and take it. If you want something bad enough, don't sit back waiting for it to fall into your lap. Don't wait for the chance. Go ahead and make an opportunity yourself. You never know what's going to happen. 2020 was a terrible year for most everybody. But one thing that came out of it is the Indies actually got the spotlight for a little bit of time. So, are we just going to go ahead and sit back and wait for that spotlight to go ahead and stop shining? Or are we going to go ahead and create a new lighting system that's going to keep it well lit for the rest of the time? So if you want it bad enough, go out there and take it. So keep that in mind. I want to see those posts out there. Please post and tag Keith and myself in there. And just some of the Keith Garvey art put out there on Facebook. Tag us so we can see it. We just want to see those pebbles out there because everyone knows throw a pebble into a pond, get a ripple. Get enough pebbles thrown in that pond, get the waves of change. So until next time, which is this Thursday, which my guests, it was guests, now it is guests, will be Jimmy Noble and Courtney Rose Dameron talking about Toasty the Killer Toaster. Yes, I said that. And yes, it is real. And no, it is not just a bad bedtime story or anything like that. Just got forgotten. This is Jim's new project. It is a one-day campaign for National Toast Day. You do not want to miss out. Come have some fun because you know Totally Rad likes to do it that way. Thank you, everyone, for being on here. We had a blast with Keith and hope he'll be back again. Everyone that was here, thank you very much. And I'll be reaching out to some of y'all uh, for other interviews and for unscripted uh, possibilities on there as well. So until next time, Jim's already said it. Keep it indie, y'all.